In this video series, we knit the totally tubular scarf and scooty. In this video, we'll begin the scarf. We'll finish it in a second video. Those are actually videos two and three. Video one was an overview and a discussion about the yarn. It's a soft number five yarn that I found at Walmart. And full details are in the other video. The version of the pattern we'll be knitting together today is a bulky version, so you'll need any bulky knitting machine that does have a river. Several other gauges will be included in the written pattern when it comes out in Country Knitting and Maine News and Views. One of the things that you will learn today is how to make these cute pom-poms, so you will need fun for a yarn for them. Gauge and stitch size were discussed in the overview and yarn video. We'll be working across a span of 20 needles on each bed, but we'll begin with only 10 on each bed and they alternate. First rack so that the needles oppose each other perfectly and they would hit each other if all came forward, but we will use every other one so that will never happen. Select every other one on each bed. Now in waist yarn, do a tubular cast on. That's knit one zigzag row across at a small stitch size, then hang the comb, the river comb, by pushing it up through the bottom without its wire. Insert the wire, which you can't really see very well, but I promise you, I'm inserting it, and hang a river weight in the comb. Now to press one part button on each carriage, they must be on opposite sides, and turn up the stitch size to a reasonable size for your waist yarn. If you are using a Singer Studio Toyota or Elna Bulky, it is probably the SR155 or whatever it was called in the brand you have. And the instructions for this cast on begin on page 12 in the manual I was able to download. Begin in stockinette settings and knit across. Using every other needle, knit the zigzag row at stockinette settings but a very small stitch size. Change the left set lever on the river carriage to zero and knit across. The main bed will knit this time. Move the main carriage cam lever to this symbol that looks like a circle with a line through it and knit across and this time the river will do the knitting. Return the main bed dial to the stockinette position and knit again. And by the way, this is the cast on instructions if you're looking at the manual. Since this entire project is knitted as a tube, you will need to keep alternating the settings of this style every other row to create that tube. The actual tubular knitting for a length of fabric instructions begin on page 25 and I'm going to slightly alter them in that for some of this project we knit on every other needle and only use every needle for the part with the main yarn. Now, whatever machine you're knitting on, knit a few rows of waist yarn as the machine is now set. These are tubular rows also, so keep on changing your dial, those who need to do that. Now, stop knitting with waist yarn, remove it, thread in the fun fur yarn, turn the stitch dial all the way up, now we'll knit a few rows in fun fur. Only one bed has knitted the fur so far because of the tubular knitting. The next one is about to. Knit 16 passes with the carriage. That's actually eight total rounds. When you see me pausing after every two rows, that's to reach under and pull the comb down. It really helps because even though there are weights on the knitting, the hairs in the fun fur like to hang up on the gate pegs and cause problems and you can avoid those problems by taking a minute to tug down. The bulky machine knits fun for just fine on every other needle. Other gauges will actually knit it beautifully too, but we have to space the needles more widely, and the pattern that's written will reflect that in the other gauges. Even Passip and Superba will work. I have some videos of that. It's time to break the fun for yarn, and you can just tie on the main yarn. Tie it right onto the fun fur yarn tail. We can get by with knitting the knot through on the join because eventually the fun fur 
is going to fluff out and cover our misdeeds. Keep on knitting at the current settings until you see the main yarn begin to knit and then stop and make some adjustments. Here it has begun to knit. It did not knit every stitch in this round, but this is good enough. We'll stop here. The fun fur was knitted using every other needle. The main yarn needs to be knitted using every needle. So those needles that were out of work across a span of 20 need to be put into work. Do so on both beds and the needles should exactly oppose one another now. Up until now, they've been skewed from our original cast on setup, an extra needle on the left on one side and on the right on the other bed. But now we want them to oppose perfectly so as to make a neat tube. It doesn't matter in the fur because you can't really see the edges of the tube. But the way we avoid a hitch in the tube of normal tubular knitting is to make sure that the needles are perfectly opposed. Set the row counter to zero now. On the first row, the needles that were empty on one side of the work will start to pick up and knit. On the second row, the other side will pick up and knit. Do watch carefully to make sure this actually happens because we are using about the heaviest yarn the machine will knit comfortably. The first few rows may feel very stiff, mine did, and you may find that you need to hang extra weights, which I'm doing right now. In addition to the river weights, I'm using one of these heavy forks on each side. These are from my book, Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks for Machine Knitters. That book contains instructions for making these, along with a lot of other tools and two free patterns. These heavy forks are one of the most useful tools I have ever owned. So I'm going to do something that I have never done before. At the end of this movie, I'm going to give you a coupon code to use on Ravelry to get $2 off the book. My books are always delivered by the Ravelry system, but normally I prefer to have you shop my website just because I'm able to put much more information on there about each book, so I want you to know exactly what you're getting and make sure it's right for you. In this case, however, please visit the site to get all that information, but then go to my Ravelry store because the coupons work much better from there. Here's the store name, and what I'll do is put a link to the store and a link to the listing itself for this book in the program notes so that you can find it if you want to. Okay, now back to knitting. You might possibly have to manually help a stitch knit off. Once the weights are correctly adjusted, you can keep on going. Now it's knitting smoothly and it's getting easier to do. Continue with the tubular knitting in the main yarn either until the skein runs out or until you get the scarf as long as you want. If it's been knitting well and you run into a bumpy spot, it's a signal that you should readjust the weight positions. That just happened to me, as you saw, but I adjusted the weights and knitted on until 244 appeared on the counter. That used up one whole skein. Don't run entirely out of the main yarn. Stop with a few inches left to knit through. In the next video, we will finish the scarf, knitting the second pom-pom and doing the finishing. Here's the coupon code to use on Ravelry to get $2 off of cool tools and cheap tricks. It will expire at the end of 2020.